My name is Thanks Ahim Shintas. Such a pleasure. Same here, same here. Um, go mm -hmm. ahead and introduce yourself to everybody because we might have a few people that may not know who you are and let us yeah. know where you're tuning in. Great. So, um, first of all, thanks for having me today. I'm super excited for the live session. And my name is Anna Rousseau. I'm half German, half Italian. I grew up and I'm born in Germany. And um, since one year now, I live in the United States in beautiful Los Angeles because the sun is so much better here. <laughs> There's no snow. <laughs> And of course, my industry, which is um, the beauty industry, is definitely more effective here in Los Angeles than um, in Germany, where I am. That's I mean, my opinion. <laughs> I agree with that 100%. I, I actually, yeah. my mom owns a salon, so I definitely oh, agree with that 100%. That's exactly what I talk about. <laughs> exactly. So what does it take for someone that is in that industry to be successful? And the reason why I ask that question is because I see a lot of people that that is their passion, but they don't get it to a level where they're making a lot of money, where they could provide yeah. for their families. So give us a couple of pointers on what it take to build it in that industry. And it's very competitive in LA itself too, because we have a lot of people that want to get into that. Yeah. So first of all, I really think you have to feel it in your gut. I mean, that feeling really has to be there that you want to be um, on a level that I'm saying the regular people not actually willing to go for because fear is always in our way. People always have fear um, to go to the next level because they might lose something that they have or changes we humans, we don't like changes a lot. We are in our comfort zone. And um, fortunately, I've never been like this. I always wanted to see how far I can come. And as soon as you like kick the fear out of your way, then it's easier for you to see like a clear vision for yourself. Because if you just live your vision and your passion, it's easier for you to actually, yeah, understand what you made for like everybody has a um yeah direction and we have so many doors they are open but some doors we don't really see because we always have that security mindset i need to pay my bills i need to do that of course we do have to pay our bills but then we put our passion and what we really would love to do aside and that's what actually blocked us a little bit I agree with that. So here's my question. I know, for example, first-hand experience, my mom initially, when she started getting into that industry, she worked long hours and she really yeah. worked on her craft. She did a lot of, uh, I don't want to say she worked for free, but I don't think in initial phases of her business, she charged what she was worth or what she was yeah. providing. What is your suggestion when it comes to that? How does one person need to start? Do you work for free? Do you give your services out for discounted? Do you do you do a lot of stuff for for just getting your your referrals back in? What are some of the strategies that are worked for you? I think I mean there's different strategies. I probably think they work out for each one of us. I just can tell my own experience with that whole situation. I started very young when I was 16 years old. Um, in a hair salon, I was in training for three years. Um, after my training, I did my master in hairstyling. So I have my master degree in hair salon and hairstylist. And then I'm like, oh, shit, I want to do something like beauty and makeup was always a passion. So I started to um, offer my hair clients like free makeup trials because I didn't have like a professional education yet. But I wanted to build and I was pretty good in it for the fact that I didn't have a professional education. So I wanted to see how people like it, to get some feedback. That's why I was offering first like my work for free. But then people were telling me you birth more, you should actually like try to train and go to a professional makeup school, which I did then afterwards. And then I'm like, okay, no risk, no fun. Should I go back to the hair salon? Or should I maybe try to be self-employed and open my own business. But I never really wanted to stay in a hair salon because I feel like if you stay on one spot all the time, 
like from Monday to Saturday and he will stay on your feed, which is cool for me. I'm, I don't have a problem, but I mean, we getting older and our bodies, they like consumed after a while. I and I loved to travel all the time. So I started on the side. So I was, I decided first to be a part-time hairstylist and do part-time to just get my safe money <laughs> and was opening um, a business, which like a mini business and um, was building my clientele. And then as soon as I figured, oh my God, that's like way too much now. I can't handle both anymore. Then I quit my part-time job and um, my boss was very sad. He's like, oh no, Anna, why are you leaving us? I'm like, yeah, I think I need to reach the next level. And I also moved to another city, um, to Munich, which was bigger than where I lived because there was more photo shoots, more, more um, TV shows and stuff like that. So I figured I, need, I want to go in this direction. So I, I was leaving my hair salon behind. And that's actually how I was building but I always knew Munich is just like a stop. I wanted to be in Los Angeles. Like I was just there one time and I knew uh, that's the place to be. You know? I mean, that's probably what every makeup artist thinks. <laughs> it was not but, easy. Um, I, was telling, I was telling my wife the other night that, you know, just the fact that my mom is a hairstylist, I have a lot more respect for the profession because yeah. a lot of people don't know that you got to be standing on your feet a lot of times. During the holiday season, she doesn't she doesn't get the holiday season either because a lot of her clients need her and want. And she's a psychiatrist as well because we have to listen to a lot of things, you know. Exactly, and that's and and here's the funny part. I think my mom is like, you know, the 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 Valley Area's CNN channel because she knows everybody's secret. She knows what everybody's doing. She knows where everybody's yeah. kids go. She know she has all the data. But here's the crazy part. I have forced myself to pull a lot of information from her, but she's very secretive. She knows everything, but she doesn't unveil it. Like, I'm all like, yeah. you knew this. Why didn't you tell me? Why, why didn't yeah. you just you know, say this person is opening this business so we could have done this together? She's like, well, it's not my business to share it with you. I'm only listening and I'm observing. But I do agree that a lot of people want to be in L.A., so here's my question on the business. Mm -hmm. side. If you had to go back, how many hours would you say you were dedicating to your craft and learning it? And why do you think not more people are willing to do that? Because I know if you really want to be good in your business and what you do, you have to put way more hours than any, everybody else. So what is your recommendation for the younger entrepreneurs that want to get in the business? How many hours? What, should it be five days, six days? Is it five hours a day? Is it 10 hours? What, what are some of the ideas that got you to this level? Um, I was always thinking that when I put a lot of work physically in, that um, I will be get to my goal faster. But then by time and by the years, I figured out that um, work smart, not hard. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, if you do the right decisions and if you connect, like what I decided to do, networking. It's so important to network, connect with other people that are like-minded. Don't be afraid to ask people for their um, for help. Um, and when you're very young, for some funny reason, you always think um, you have that pride and nobody really should know that you like don't know certain things. You don't want to embarrass yourself. I was the same way. And the older I got, um, now I'm 14 years in the industry. I'm 30 years old now. And um, the older I got, I, I saw like it's nothing wrong with asking people for their help or just asking, what do you think about it? Should I do it like this or like that? I mean, there will always be people that have different opinions. And you cannot go with every opinion, but um, it's helpful sometimes to get some feedback. And through all the connections and that network, which I spent a lot of hours on my phone. And fortunately, we have Instagram because that's how I was building my network from Germany to the United States. And I was going through a lot of things back and forward. 
I was, I actually started to live in my office for the first time, like for months and months and months. And there was no shower. I had to shower in, in the gym and like, it was crazy, but I knew what I was, why I'm doing that. And um, I had my vision and my goal and I'm still not where I want to be, but I'm already on a high level where I, maybe 10 years ago, ago, I was never thinking that I'm going to be there one day. So yes, you have to put a lot of work in and you cannot really count hours, um, how many work you have to put in. But I think over the years, if you, the important thing is you have to be consequent. If you like one day, oh, this is not working out for me today, I try something else. And if you try too many things, you're not on that path and you're not going to end up where you planned at the beginning where you want to be. And um, that makes that yeah. makes a lot of sense because I do see a lot of people changing their minds and not focusing on one thing. I, I, I have that challenge also too because I'm capable of doing other things, but I realized over the years that you got to stick to one thing and then you master. Yeah. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with thank us. Thank you so much I, for having me. Definitely. And we're definitely going to collaborate more. You're in LA. We're in LA. There's a lot of networking events that we could definitely do. Right. Um, it's okay. You, you, don't worry about it. My mom is not in competition with you. It's cool. You know, we could all be friends. <laughs> there is no <laughs> competition. We all want family and we should support each other. That's my opinion. I don't know if my mom wants to support you, but we'll find out. I'll put in a big <laughs> word for you. No, I'm messing with you. <laughs> no, I'm messing with you. But it's it's very, and I tell you that the crazy part is the building that I'm in right now, there is a beauty school. Uh, there's a cosmetology school downstairs. So I see so many of these girls in the morning. There's like 50 or 100 of them in that school. And it's so refreshing. They all come excited in the morning. They got their makeup. They're, I mean, it's it's a lot of activity. So, you know, I sometimes talk to them and I let them know that, you know. That's, you why, can... I, that's why I opened up one year ago my own online makeup school because there's so many young girls. They want to get education, but some of them, they don't have the financials. Right. So, um Definitely. definitely. So I'll, I'll put you in contact with them too. So maybe you could do something with them. All yeah. right. We'll be in contact. We'll, we'll coordinate. We'll let you know. But thank Sounds you so much great. for taking this time. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.